A fairly common design pattern on the web is tabbed controls. So you have a web page where there's multiple parts to your content and you want to be able to come in here and click on different tabs and show different parts of the content. So I've got this code just linked to in the comments. You can open that and follow along. It already includes the HTML and the CSS and we'll be building the JavaScript together here. What I've done is I've built a UL, an unordered list with a series of list items inside. That's what these tabs right here at the top. Now I've used display flex to make them size and spread like this. So it doesn't matter how wide the page is, it's going to spread these items out. The CSS is set up so that this tab right here, the second one, has the class active. My second section also has the class active and it's these active CSS classes. Again, it's not a keyword or anything, it's just a name that I've picked. Active here, active here is what shows the purple on the underline, the purple on the text, and this section right here is being shown and all the others are being hidden and the styles are different on these other ones. So we'll take a look at this CSS just briefly here. Uh, I have some defaults up here, you can take a look at those, they've got no bearing at all on what's happening with the navigation. Tab menu, this is the UL. It's set to display flex and justify content space between, that's what's spreading them out across the page with the first and the last being against the edges. The tabs, these are the list items inside, so list style none, very important when you're using list items to make menus. You want to get rid of the bullets that are beside them. That's what list style none does. Uh, I've got a font size and some padding. And then both tabs that have the class active. So notice there's no space in between here. That means that the active and the tab have to be on the same element. So in that state, right here, this is an active tab. It's got the purple and the purple. And if I'm hovering as well, that's another case where if you've got a tab and the person is hovering over it, it has the same styles. So I move over first, I move over a third, and you can see the styles are the exact same as they were for the active. Much simpler for the sections down below. By default, something with the class tab content is display none, so it's not showing up on the page. And then if I add the class active, again, no space here, both classes applying to the same element, if both are on there, we change the display block. That's it. So my list items all have the class tab and they have unique IDs, first, second, third, fourth. The names aren't important, just those are the IDs that I'm giving to those list items. My sections down below, all of them have class tab content, so I can grab them as a group with query selector all. But the IDs match the IDs of my list items. And this is going to be important in the script to make it easy to figure out which list item is linked to which content. The ID is just the same as the one from the list item, but it's got section and then a hyphen in front of it. So this little piece of text, I can add that. If I get the ID from the list item, I can append section and a hyphen in front of that, and that will give me the ID of the section that's supposed to be shown. So if I click on first, it's the section hyphen first that I want to show. If I click on the thing with the ID third, then it's section hyphen third that I want to show. All right, so that's the idea behind it. Let's come down to the JavaScript and actually get that to work. So we're listening for DOM content loaded. We're going to call our init function, same as we always do to get these scripts started. I want to find all my tabs. I want to find all the content sections, all the so all the sections and all the list items, I want to find those, and I'm going to save those inside of variables. Um, I'm going to make global variables just to keep this simple. So we have let tabs, and that's not going to have any value at the very beginning. And I will have all the content sections, so let's just call that sections. This will hold an array of all the tabs, this will hold an array or a node list of all the sections and a node list of all the tabs. Tabs will be equal to document query selector all. 
everything that has the class tab is now inside there. I'm going to repeat this for finding all of the sections, and they are called, there's the class name, tab content. Tab hyphen content, and we need the other variable name, sections. Okay, so we have all of our tabs, we have all, all of our sections, they're saved in global variables. We're good to go there. I want to add click listeners. So if the user clicks on one of these tabs, it's going to change the content on the page. Now I will add my listener here. Now the for each method is what I want to use to loop through this. I find the for each to be very easy to use. Um, one issue with it is that in older browsers, because this is not an array, older browsers will ignore this and say, no, you can't do that. You actually have to convert this into an array or use it as some sort of iterable interface. We can do that this way. I, I will say array for each. That's the method we're talking about. Well, I've created an empty array. I'm going to call the for each method by saying dot call. And you can see here that it takes two arguments. What's the object that you want to use as the context for calling for each? And then what are your arguments? Well, the for each method accepts a function as its arguments. So we're going to be put, putting that as our second thing here. For this, I'm going to put tabs. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to loop through the tabs in a way that treats tabs as if it were an array, and it's going to work in older browsers. It's going to work in the ones where for each is not allowed to be called on something that's not officially an array. It is a node list. All right, so I will call my function here. Now I can do this as one of the old style functions. So right there, this is the function that's going to be called once for each one of these guys. Or I can use the arrow function syntax, which means get rid of the keyword function and put an arrow inside here. Same thing. The arguments passed in to here by for each are going to be the first one is the value, the second one's the index, the third one's the array. I only need the value. I only need each one of the tabs to be passed in. So I'll put a variable here, tab. Tab will be a list item. And then the next time it gets called, it'll be the second list item, and then the third list item, and then the fourth list item. So this function, because there's four tabs, this function will get called four times. Now I want to add the click listener. That's all I want to do inside this function. I know this is... I'm adding a bunch of comments here and it's expanding it. It could be done in one single line of code, but we'll keep it spread out so that you get the comments. Uh, so tab, that is the list item I'm looking at right now. Add event listener. I'm listening for the click event. And what do I want to do when the click event happens? I want to call my other function here, switch tab. There we are. That's all we need. We found all the tabs. We've added a click event to each one of them. It's going to call this function, and then we found all the sections, so we can reference them down here. Inside this function, what I want to do is I want to get the ID from the tab. So I have to figure out which tab was clicked. EV, whenever you have a click listener, EV is the event being passed in. In this case, it's a click event being passed in. And we can ask it, hey, you know, who's the target for this click event? Well, the target is the thing that's in front of add event listener. It's the tab. So if I said let tab equal ev.target, there we go. This is the list item. I want to know its ID. Well, simple as that. Tab.id, this is the list item, that's its ID. We've got that saved. Now I want to remove the active class from the old section and the old tab. 
we need to find which one of these tabs. So like if I clicked on number three here, I have to remove the active class from this guy, and I have to remove the active class from this guy. Both the list item and the section need to have their active classes removed. Then I need to add the active class to this and act add the active class to the third section. So removing the old active classes. So I'm going to use document query selector all. And I'm going to say find everything on the page that has the class active. That's what's going to be inside here. Anything on the page that currently has the class active, that'll be this section and this. Nothing else on the page will have that class. So I'm going to find all those. We'll loop through them using the same syntax that we did right here. Actives is the thing we're looping through. And one active thing inside here. I'm going to get the class list and remove active. All right, so what's this doing? We're finding a node list. Query selector all gives us back a list of all the HTML elements that have this class. We're then going to loop through this list. We're going to use a for each loop to loop through it. I'm setting this is the thing I'm looping through. I'm going to call for each loop through it. This is going to represent the first HTML element and then the second HTML element. It's only going to loop twice because there's only two things on the page that have this class. For each one of them, I'm going to remove from the class list active. I don't want to delete the class tab. I don't want to delete the class tab content. I only want to remove this one class. And that's why we use this syntax. OK, that's done. Now I want to loop through all the sections, find an ID that matches the one that came from the tab. We have a sections variable already that we declared here and we populated here. Same thing again for each call sections. That's the thing we want to loop through. And here's our function that we're going to run. This variable will represent one section at a time as I'm looping through all four of them. Now my section that I'm looking at is going to have an ID. That's the ID of this section that I'm looking at. What are the IDs? Go back here and review. Section first, section second, section third, and section fourth. Those are the four IDs that I'm going to be looking at. And I want to find one that matches this. If I add section dash in front of the active one, so let's say it was the third, I'm going to take section hyphen and add that to the front of the ID and then see which one of these four it matches. Here's my variable ID. I'm going to do an if statement. If the word section and a hyphen and then the variable ID equals the ID of the first one, and then the second, and then the third, and then the fourth. It's going to try all four of them. So if those two IDs match, I have the one that needs to be active. And this is going to be the tab that becomes active. Tab dot class list add active. So let's just try this one. We're not changing the content. All we're doing now is changing the tab. There we go. Now it's working. Now it's actually changing. It's removing the class from the old one and adding it to the new one. You can see here's the list item that I'm clicking on each time. Okay, that's working for us. Okay, we have the loop to remove all the active classes. We're adding the one back on the tab. Now we need to add the one back on the section. Oh, well, this is section class list add active. 
there. It's as simple as that. Second, that's our default when the page loads. First, yep, section one, section three, section four. And that's how you build a tab control. Very little JavaScript input required. You need some sort of mechanism to match the ID of the tab and the ID of the section that you want to select. And then you have a class that indicates which one is the currently selected one. Just make sure that that matches up in both places. So we're just moving this class active from one to another. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.